Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Latest on coronavirus after the first group of travelers has been released. When preliminary results from two clinical tests are expected. Coming up, a potential Russia repeat. A new report suggests Russia may be trying to interfere in the 2020 election. I'm Andrew Dimber in Washington. And a live look, out, a live look outside rather with live cam. 40 cold degrees, grab a jacket. And good morning to you. It's Friday. It is February 21st. We made it to the end of the week. Hallelujah. It's Friday, everybody. That's right. We're going to get through this together, everybody. I wore a cold shoulder shirt today, but probably not the best idea because my shoulders are cold. Does anybody have any outside? extra flannel fabric that we can <laughs> duct tape to her shoulders? Were you not? Thinking. Well, I mean, the turtleneck part was fine. It's just, I was like, oh, yeah, cold shoulders, <laughs> definitely. Needle and thread, just stitch those things up and. So. No, it's. How do you style. feel about pulling on a wool flannel type? Oh, thread? that's a no. Okay. But thank you for offering. Sure. I like that coat, by the way. Thank you. Hi. Hi. And uh, make sure there's no holes in your clothing this morning because you want to uh, button up since it is so cold out there. We are 40 here in town, 34 up the road toward Bernie and right now freezing in Lost Maples. There is a breeze out there. And of course, you keep the atmosphere stirred up. You don't see as many actually freezing temperatures, but you have wind chill temperatures that are at or below freezing. It feels like freezing Randolph, New Braunfels, 25 is the wind chill right now in Lost Maples. And I think we will continue to drop down a few more degrees going for about the mid 30s or so here in town. Everything's on the low side. Mold should, I would guess, go down since uh, things have continued to dry out. Oak is showing up. Yeah, I've got some of those live oak leaves on my front lawn. Don't know about you. Anyway, for the rest of the morning commute, roads are dry. 37 degrees here in town, mostly clear skies. A bit of a breeze out there, so definitely wind chills are going to be a factor. We are going to see sunshine uh, today mixed in with a few clouds, but it's still going to be on the chilly side. 55 for high temperature today. And wind's going to ease just a little bit, but still kind of uh, enough of it out there. Weekend overall is looking pretty good. We are going to have some more clouds around here on Sunday. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now hitting the roads. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great Friday morning. All right, working on one accident right now. First came out near Days of All and Hebner. Now I think it's more between uh, Callahan and Wurzbach from the off ramp onto westbound I-10 main lanes. It started there right on the access road near Fallen Leaf, and it looks like they may be getting it cleared up right now, but it is causing a little traffic buildup. But this accident here, looks like it's a DWI accident. Um, I don't know if it's there anymore. I had the camera on, they must have changed it on me. Might be cleared up now, so that's good news. All right, Mark Leslie, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Nick. New into the newsroom this morning, a fire on the north side of town. Our Sarah Costa is live with the latest. It's a tool on fire. What can you tell us, Sarah? We're still waiting on our public information officer, Joe Arrington, who just arrived on scene. He's actually talking to the chief right now, and he's going to come tell us exactly what's going on here. But we do know this is a two alarm fire at these apartment complex called the Parliament Bend. They have 33 units out here this morning, but we do also know that the fire has been put out and that they are in the mop up stages. We don't know how many people have been evacuated, but it looks like they're really focusing their attention on this building number 10. You can see a ladder into one of the balconies there and you can see some smoke damage on the roof. We, there were two hook and ladder trucks that had their ladders out when we arrived this morning. Uh, it looks like they had for fighting this fire on the defense. That's usually what that means when you see those hook and ladder trucks up. Again, they're in the mop up stages and just stay with us here on GMSA and we'll bring you the latest once we get that information on this two alarm fire on the north side. Again, it's Parliament Bend apartment complex on Parliament right off, right off of Blanco. Reporting live from the north side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. More to come on that. Uh, we continue to follow the latest, of course, on the coronavirus this morning. After a two-week quarantine, first group of travelers from China to arrive at JBSA Lackland has been released. Meanwhile, the lone person who tested positive from that group has been treated and transferred out of Methodist Texan Hospital. Second group of 145 American evacuees remain under quarantine this week. Other evacuees were taken to California this week, and some who tested positive were taken to Nebraska. At least five people who tested positive for the virus are being treated in Spokane, Washington.
The World Health Organization says preliminary results from two clinical trials on drugs to potentially treat COVID-19 are expected in three weeks. And back here at home, SAFE officers are asking for your help to identify the person who broke into Idea Carver Academy on Robinson Place. One of the suspects from the East Side burglary now wearing blue hair was apprehended in the case. SAFE officers posted this video on their Facebook page. They say he is one of two people accused of breaking into that school. Officers still need your help to identify the second suspect in the case. A smartphone, an iPad tablet, and other supplies were taken from the school last month. If you can help in this case, call the East Property Crimes Division. That phone number is 210-207-4106. In your morning headlines, House lawmakers were warned by intelligence officials that Russia is interfering in the 2020 election with the goal of getting President Donald Trump reelected. President Trump so infuriated by this, he replaced the director of national intelligence before his temporary term expired. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. A potential Russia repeat? ABC News has confirmed the intelligence community warned a bipartisan group of House lawmakers last week that Russia is planning to interfere in the 2020 campaign with the goal of getting President Trump reelected. The New York Times reporting that briefing was done in the presence of House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff, the Democrat who also led the impeachment proceedings in the House. That infuriated Trump, who again attacked Schiff last night at a rally in Colorado. That little Adam Schiff, what a crooked politician. He's a corrupt politician. Sources tell ABC News the president believed Democrats would use the information from this latest Russia briefing against him. Democrats overnight defending the congressional oversight. Adam Schiff tweeting, he is again jeopardizing our efforts to stop foreign meddling, exactly as we warned he would do. Nobody's been tougher on Russia than Donald Trump. Nobody. According to another report in the Washington Post, the president called in then acting director of national intelligence, Joseph McGuire, into the Oval Office for a, quote, dressing down last Friday. I am not partisan and I am not political. But after last week's election security briefing, McGuire is out, replaced by ambassador to Germany Richard Grinnell, a Trump loyalist with no intelligence experience. And overnight, ABC News confirming a wider staff shakeup within the intelligence community. Two aides are expected to leave their position, and a former aide to Republican Congressman Devin Nunez could be promoted to a senior role, signaling that Trump may be looking for loyalty in the wake of the Russia probe and impeachment trial. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. In California, a man is behind bars after he temporarily blinded a highway patrol pilot with a laser pointer. Take a look at this. A man on the ground is seen in the video pointing a blue laser directly at the pilot Monday night. The plane's infrared camera picked up the alleged suspect as he and he was arrested on the ground shortly after. Choppers and other military aircraft near Travis Air Force Base have also been targeted within the past week. The suspect is facing felony charges. The FBI is investigating. In the state of Ohio, a mother of an autistic boy angry after she was informed her child was locked in a bathroom and tied to a chair. Ohio authorities are investigating the incident after Crystal Taylor says she received a report from a caseworker about her six-year-old. She doesn't understand why the school did not contact her immediately since the caseworker told her there were other children and staff members in the classroom at the time. District officials say an employee has since been relieved of duties pending the outcome of an investigation. The young boy was taken out of the elementary school. If you purchased a computer from Office Depot or Office Max over the past few years, you might check your email or check the mail rather. The FTC is refunding $34 million to Office Depot and Office Max customers. The checks going to people who paid for technical services and repairs for their computers. According to the Federal Trade Commission, between 2009 and 2016, some Office Depot customers were mistakenly told their products had malware symptoms, fooling them into purchasing repair services. Average refund check for this case is $63. Hey, that's $63. 63 you didn't have. 439, 40 degrees. New details released involving the murder of a Hollywood Hills therapist. Still ahead, the man accused and now behind bars for killing Amy Harwick and the charges he faces. Plus, one of the most historical items up for grabs up next where you can place your bid for a signed copy of the Trump impeachment trial. And a live look outside with live cam. Do as I say, not as I do. Cover your shoulders. It's cold outside.
What's being called, quote, the mis most historical item President Trump will ever sign is up for sale at an auction house. We are talking about a copy of the House Judiciary Committee's impeachment report signed by the president. After Donald, President Donald Trump made history becoming only the third president to be impeached, a man named Jonathan Moore obtained the president's signature at a rally in Michigan. That report signed by the president is now up for auction on the Golden Auctions website. The highest bid as of Thursday evening was $17,000. The document has since been authenticated by two separate companies. The online auction closes this Saturday at 10 p.m. 442, 40 degrees. Finding the best ride that fits all your needs. Still to come, the list of the best cars of 2020 before you head out to a dealership. Man faces the death penalty after he allegedly murdered a Hollywood Hills therapist. Up next on GMSA, what Gareth Perthhouse has to say after Amy Harwick was found dead early last weekend. Welcome back. Your time now is 445. New details released about a prominent family therapist murder. In this morning's GMA First Look, Elizabeth Hur shares the latest on the Hollywood Hills investigation. In this morning's GMA First Look, the man accused of murdering Drew Carey's former fiance, sex therapist Amy Harwick, is behind bars, potentially facing the death penalty. On Thursday, 41 year old Gareth Pursehouse, seen in this YouTube video. People look at me like I'm a crazy person when I do this, but. Appearing in court after authorities say he strangled and threw Harwick, his ex-girlfriend, off the third floor balcony of her Hollywood Hills apartment early Saturday morning. When they broke up, like he, he didn't take it well at all. Do stupid stuff, say stupid stuff. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the latest on the investigation, plus the big change Drew Carey is trying to make with the hashtag Justice for Amy. With your GMA First Look, I'm Elizabeth Hur, ABC News, New York. If you're looking for a new car this year, we've got you covered. Something that drives nicely is reliable and safe. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore it shows us the top picks of familiar models and some newer ones, too. Consumer Reports buy some 50 cars a year, testing everything from gas mileage to how easy it is to install that car seat. Their list of top picks for 2020 is out. They factored in road tests, owner satisfaction surveys, and safety. And this year, they were sticklers for new safety features. To be a Consumer Reports top pick, each car is required to have forward collision warning and automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection as standard equipment. So here goes. The Subaru Forester is CR's top pick for a small SUV. They found the fuel economy impressive, the driving great, and owners extremely satisfied. The price range is twenty-five to thirty-five thousand. Need a bigger SUV with a third row? The standout for a mid-sized SUV is the Kia Telluride. Its road test scores among the highest ever given. It's comfortable and aggressively priced. The Honda Ridgeline is their top pick for a compact. Pickup. It has a comfortable car-like ride, but the usefulness of a truck. We've always liked the Honda Ridgeline, but the addition of the advanced safety features as standard on all 2020 trim lines bumped it up to this year's top pick list. The top pick for a hybrid, the Toyota Prius. Again, it's been a top pick for a record 17 times. It gets 52 miles to the gallon and scored very well for reliability. If you're thinking electric, their top pick is the Tesla Model 3. But if budget is key, their top pick for a small car that costs less than 25 grand is the Toyota Corolla. The rest of the top picks on KSAT.com. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Right now, it's time to check in with a man who never met a pickup he didn't like. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that about you, but that's very interesting. Only if it's Ford. All right, here we <laughs> okay. go. Okay. Ah. So uh, we have the accident we had on I-10 is now clear. Good news. Um, the highway is now open on the access road, and everything's looking good. <laughs> All right, we also have a drive times here. Uh, eastbound 151 to 1604 to 99 minutes. And if you're on 90 eastbound to 1604 to 35, 12 minutes, great times there. All right, let's take a look outside of the Trans Guide. 90 in military is looking great. 410 in Callahan, flowing very smoothly. And we have a 410 at McCullough on the northeast side is looking great. And uh, let's do one more here. We got 1604 in Petrenko. No cars on the road. Good thing you're used to loud noises. I keep dropping our thermos over here. That's my, my apologies, my friend. That one almost got me, right? Yeah, you got your attention. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. What's the most frustrating thing you can do? Be on a computer and have all the pop-ups pop up, right? I am trying to confirm a story that we're running later, 
and I'm having a lot of trouble because pop-up ads everywhere. Yeah, it's a it's local exciting. website that's not ours, and it's, wow, there's a lot of pop-ups. And then it's like, if you want to, and I'm like, write to what I need to confirm it. Yeah. This is the first line. What? And it says you have to subscribe now in order to read the rest. I'm like, are you kidding me? Real quick, before we get into weather, I gotta ask you, when you see pop-ups and it's for like well-known advertisers, mm -hmm. does that annoy you where you're like, I may not buy that again? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the idea of ad revenue, I mean, while necessary, can also maybe if you, be a negative. Especially if you wanna play a video and that 15 seconds runs before it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I mean, uh, everybody to watch makes it. money off of that. Yeah. That I'm like, the Facebook ads get me. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. But you know what? It, it angers me more than wants me to make me buy that. Here's the good news. It's Friday. It is Friday. Uh, and, and, and the ad revenue I, online, that's a necessary evil. Nope, here's another pop-up. We don't have any, did you get it? No, oh, it's another oh. pop-up. Okay, another pop-up. Um, I'm just gonna walk over here and get away from that computer. Uh, we do have uh, no rain to deal with this morning, so that's fantastic. Yesterday, oh my goodness gracious, boy, that was a good looking picture there. We started to, uh, a couple of uh, spots started to clear out a little bit late in the day, but boy, it was just one of those bone chilling days, and now it's just plain old cold this morning. We don't have any of that dampness to uh, deal with. 40 here in town, 35 uh, Bandera, freezing right now at Lost Maples, and then, yeah, wind chill to deal with this morning. Wind is out of the north at about 10, 15 miles per hour, and that's going to prevent the actual air temperature from getting as low as what it could, but obviously we still have the, the wind chill to deal with, so I think we will still drop down maybe a couple of more degrees. There's a lot of uh, fairly dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. It was a little bit drier um, yesterday, but that way upstairs, and then maybe a milky shade to the sky, but we're going to have a, a lot of sunshine today, a couple of clouds out there, and as far as the wind flow, obviously it's coming in here out of the north, and that's going to continue to pull in some very, very dry air all the way through tonight. So good looking night. It's going to cool. It's going to stay cool today and then cool off pretty quickly or even more so once the sun goes down tonight. Tomorrow morning, start off fantastic. And then the flow really starts to come in here out of the southeast. Late tomorrow night, we'll have more clouds developing, and that's really going to pump in the humidity by Sunday morning. And we'll have plenty of clouds around here on Sunday. Maybe even a little bit of a shower late on Sunday, early Monday, but that'd be the only little glitch, I think, in the, the weekend forecast, other than the fact we're going to have a lot more clouds around on Sunday. Uh, as far as the rest of today, nothing going on here. Nice start tomorrow, a couple of clouds, especially later on in the afternoon tomorrow and then tomorrow night clouds really start to move on in here and like I said then we have uh, cloudier skies on Sunday and then behind that we've got overall a very good looking forecast but temperatures are going to be going up and down and every which direction 50 today at noon a lot of sunshine out there or partly cloudy skies at times and then 55 for a high temperature so it is going to be on the cool side but at least we will have that sunshine and then tomorrow we will have uh, some clouds especially later on in the day call it partly cloudy skies cold start 62 almost up to normal 50 then on sunday and we'll have a lot more moisture around here a lot more clouds and maybe that shower late could go into the early early morning hours of monday then we're going to start to clear on out. A lot of sunshine for next week. A couple little fronts moving on through here. Doesn't look like they're going to do much of anything. We'll be in the 70s Monday, Tuesday, and then back down to only about 60 Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. Thank you, Mike. 453, 40 degrees. You get it, yeah. More pop ups. A new film starring Al Pacino as a Nazi hunter is out today. Up next, how the executive producer says it hits close to home for him. In your Spotlight News, a big dog trying to take down Sonic the Hedgehog at the box office. It's uh, The Call of the Wild, based on the Jack London novel, expected to bring in between 10 to $20 million. Mixed review film stars Harrison Ford and a CGI dog named Buck. Executive producer Jordan Peele's new film, Hunters, is out on Amazon Prime today. The new movie stars Al Pacino as he hunts down Nazis in this 1970s based series. Peel says he thinks the idea of Nazis in America embedded in our system is one that is that hits very close to home right now. And if Hunters is a hit, that will be a nice birthday present for Peel because he turns 41 today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. Peel. 457, 40 degrees. In our next half hour, San Antonio police are investigating an armed robbery. It happened at a Circle K convenience store on Calabra Road overnight. We have details from police. And listen up, Star Wars fans, so-called Baby Yoda merchandise almost available. We'll tell you where you can get your hands on it.
Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. It's been a cold night. A lot of folks trying to stay warm, and there was a fire overnight. It erupted at an apartment complex on the north side. We are live at the scene with the latest. Plus, a new intelligence report says Russia could be interfering in the 2020 race for president. And we are racing into the weekend, looking back towards downtown San Antonio. Cold start to the day. Will we warm up and how's the weekend looking? We're standing by with Mike Ostrage. Good morning to you. It is Friday. It is February 21st. Hey, Friday. It's cold outside. It is bundle up. Mike, do we go any lower than this before sunrise? Uh, in some places we will. We do have a bit of a breeze out there this morning, so we have a wind chill to deal with, and that keeps the atmosphere stirred up a little bit more. So you don't usually see really, really cold thermometer readings, but of course, it feels very cold. Right now we are at 39, so we did drop down one degree from last hour. Rock Springs is now down to uh, 30, and we've got that breeze out of the north at about 9 miles per hour. We don't have anything as far as any rain. As a matter of fact, uh, when I walked outside this morning coming into work, nothing but clear skies out there. We will have a few clouds around today. Now, with that wind, we do have wind chill readings. It feels like uh, 33 out there at the airport. 25 is wind chill at Lost Maples, 35 Bandera, and 25 also up the road in Kerrville. So needless to say, you got to bundle up, but we've got a great looking day. By the way, mold and everything else are on the low side. We're starting to see some of that good old just when we finish up. I think we get a break you know, after mountain cedar. Now oak is starting to uh, show up and we're just in the early stages of obviously oak pollen season. Mostly clear cold. Finally, sunshine today with some clouds and it's going to stay cool though. Only mid 50s. So we will be a good 10 degrees below normal today, but the sun's going to make it feel pretty nice. Cold start tomorrow. Tomorrow, a lot of sunshine, but the clouds will definitely thicken up later on, especially tomorrow night and then much warmer on Sunday. Lots of clouds, maybe a shower late on Sunday. We'll start off next week warm and then another cold front comes through here. Any more really good rain chances? We'll talk about that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mike. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a great Friday morning. Um, right now, things are looking good. No accidents to report, no construction. If you're on the way to work right now, expect a very smooth commute. Let's take a look at some drive times here. All right, we got if you're on 1604 eastbound from US 281 to I-35, nine minutes. And if you're on 1604 westbound from I-35 to US 281, eight minutes. Great times there. Taking a look outside at the Trans Guide, 410 and 151. Traffic picking up just a little bit, but still looks really, really smooth there. 90 in military, very good. Hey, good speed, those cars. They're, they're going pretty, not pretty fast. 410 and Callahan looking good as well on the northwest side. And 410 and McCullough, things are looking great. Well, hope you have a wonderful morning. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. A two alarm fire at a north side apartment has displaced 20 people this morning. Happened at the Parliament Bend Complex in the 11,800 block of Parliament Road. That's near Blanco. Sarah Costa live on scene. Sarah, did you get a chance to talk with the San Antonio Fire Department just yet? We just spoke with them maybe about 10 minutes ago, and we just get an update about two minutes ago from them. The 20 people that were displaced, that number has gone down. They said they were able to get power back up to the building. And now it's only about 12 people that are displaced. And the good news from this two alarm fire this morning here on the north side is that no one was injured and they were able, crews were able to knock down the fire within about an hour or so. We step out so you can see the building right behind me is that building 10 here at the Parliament Bend apartment complex. And that's the building that caught fire this morning. Around three o'clock is when they got the call out here. They the fire department upped it to a two alarm fire as a precaution. They said there's about 20 people in the building. Everyone was safely evacuated. Eight units total in this building. Four of those units were damaged, one with significant damage. Those four units have about six to seven people will be permanently displaced from them. Uh, the fire department telling us that those people living in those four units will be able to be rehoused within the complex or with family. Uh, the Red Cross is on standby, but you can see these trucks driving by right now. They're about to clear the scene shortly. They're just working on getting the power back up to part of that building 10. Uh, what they did, what crews did say is that arson will not be coming out this morning because they do believe that this was an accidental fire started on the second balcony, possibly by a cigarette butt. 
So again, fire crews letting us know that this fire was knocked down relatively quickly this morning and the two alarm fire, the two alarm that was called out was canceled shortly after that. Live from the north side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you very much. Well, also new this morning, San Antonio police say they are looking for two suspects who took off after robbing a convenience store at gunpoint overnight. It happened at a Circle K store in the 9600 block of Culebra, which is on the far west side. Police say just before 2 a.m., the two men walked into the store, showed a handgun, and got away with beer. They were last seen driving away in a pickup. No injuries were reported. Funeral service is set for later today for U.S. Army Sergeant First Class Javier Gutierrez at Community <coughs> Bible Church on San Antonio's north side. A public viewing schedule from noon to one. Services will be held from one to three. Gutierrez will be buried with full honors tomorrow morning at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery. He was recently killed in action during a combat mission in Afghanistan. In your morning headlines, a new intelligence report says Russia is interfering in the 2020 race for president and trying to get President Trump reelected. House leaders were briefed about the report, which angered the president. Meanwhile, according to another report in The Washington Post, the president called in then acting director of national intelligence, Joseph McGuire, for a, quote, dressing down last Friday. But now after last week's election security briefing, McGuire is out. He was replaced by ambassador to Germany, Richard Grinnell. Wells Fargo may be close to a deal to settle federal investigations into bogus accounts it created without customers' knowledge. Those accounts made in banking, auto lending, and mortgage businesses. The New York Times says the settlements could be announced as early as today. There's no word yet on the size of the fines. Well, jury deliberations will continue today at Harvey Weinstein's New York rape trial. Yesterday, jurors sent a judge a note asking to hear a reading of actress Annabella Ciora's testimony. That'll be read today. Her allegations are key to the most serious charges the jury's deciding on. It's exactly 507, 39 degrees. Still ahead, a popular social media platform making it easier to spot and flag false information online. We'll tell you about Twitter's new feature. Hey, do you wish your house smelled like a good old cheeseburger? Who doesn't? We're going to tell you about McDonald's, and they're making some new candles that will do just that. They'll change your life. I don't think I want my house to smell like a McDonald's I cheeseburger. see, but you have other flavor scent choices coming up here. I don't know. We're going to have to dive deeper into that. And we'll I, see. I, I think so. I mean, Kentucky Fried Chicken, maybe. <laughs> Look at that. Welcome back, everybody. It's 10 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, rejoice, Star Wars fans. The so-called Baby Yoda merchandise will soon be available. Hallelujah. Disney is showing off a slew of new products in the form of the adorable baby alien, officially called The Child. Get ready for action figures, plush dolls, Lego sets, board games, even an animatronic Baby Yoda that moves, blinks, and giggles. That's the one I want. The toys are now available for pre-order on Disney's website. They're going to sell out of that Baby Yoda stuff. Hey, you know that feeling when you come home and your whole house smells like something delicious being cooked up in the kitchen? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one cooking. Unless you're the one cooking My it. My husband does, but I don't. Now you can experience the scent of melted cheese, grilled hamburger, baked bread with just the light of a match. Because McDonald's didn't bottle the smell or of its iconic quarter pounder with cheese. It put it in a candle. Six candles to be exact. The quarter pounder scented pack features bun, ketchup, pickled cheese, onion, and beef votives. <laughs> really? <laughs> you can burn them individually or all at once for the ultimate aroma experience. See, I saw the green one from a distance, and that is pickles, but I don't know if it's dill or sweet. I assume Probably it's dill. dill. It would be mm -hmm. dill, but mm -hmm. I don't know that I want my house smelling like a pickle. Okay. All right. Duly noted. Right now, it's uh, exactly 5, 12, 39 degrees. Have you seen the new Sonic the Hedgehog movie yet? Still ahead, the popular characters' co-stars are weighing in on just how surreal it was acting next to a 90s icon. And next, more on a new way Twitter is using uh, to alert people about misinformation on its social media platform. Asbestos, the mineral miracle. Asbestos is known to cause cancer, and yet it's still legal. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with mesothelioma, you may be entitled to compensation, even if your asbestos exposure happened years ago. 
Call Sokolov Law now for a free legal consultation at 1-800-906-8500. That's 1-800-906-8500. I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. When you're confident in your gut, you feel confident to take on anything. With Benefiber, you'll feel the power of gut health confidence every day. Benefiber is a 100% natural prebiotic fiber. Benefiber. Trust your gut. Does scrubbing grease feel like a workout? Scrub less with Dawn Ultra. Its superior grease cleaning formula gets to work faster, making easy work of tough messes. Dawn takes care of tough grease wherever it shows up. Scrub less, save more with Dawn. Good morning. Welcome back. 515. Twitter is testing a new way to alert users about a tweet that contains misinformation. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Elizabeth Herr have details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter's new effort to counter false information. The company says it is experimenting with colorful labels and other tools to respond to misinformation from political and public figures. Apple is in a publishing battle reportedly trying to block the distribution of a new book by a former company executive called App Store Confidential. Reports say Apple wants the book pulled, saying the author discloses business secrets. However, it's already out on Kindle. And imagine making a half a million dollars and just being Average. Bloomberg has ranked the richest towns in the country for the fourth straight year, Silicon Valley's Atherton, California's number one average annual income, $525,000 per year. Scarsdale, New York, came in a distant second, followed by Hillsborough, California, and Cherry Hills Village, Colorado. And those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. More than 60 local artists who live and work in the Deco District are opening up their private homes, galleries, and studios for the 13th annual On and Off Fredericksburg Road Studio Tour. Sarah Costa spoke to one of the founding artists about the importance of sharing art culture in our city. But I think it's just this mixture of all these different cultures here is really makes San Antonio a fabulous place for art. Dale Jensen is a San Antonio artist that has been working with sheet metal for over 20 years. She lives and works in her studio in the heart of the Deco District that is known for its many artists. Those artists are inviting the public to come see their private homes, studios and galleries at the 13th annual On and Off Fredericksburg Road Studio Tour. For them to see us and to, to see that this neighborhood is thriving and vibrant is, is, a, is really important. The neighborhood art tour started 13 years ago by artists like Dale and is organized by the nonprofit Beale House Arts. The executive director of the nonprofit, Kellen McIntyre, says art tours like this are crucial for the district. If your arts community is healthy, your community is healthy. If your arts community is sick, your community is sick. The self-guided tour will feature 44 locations with 60 featured artists that live and work right here in the Deco District, along with an additional 200 guest artists. McIntyre says you can explore artist homes or studios in several neighborhoods, including Los Angeles Heights, Keystone and Jefferson. And we wanted to highlight that resource in this area and help bring uh, the Deco District uh, some notoriety and, and, some, uh, and some awareness. McIntyre says every year you never know what you are going to find in some of these eclectic studios, like this smoking UFO ship by Jensen. She says it's why she encourages the community to explore some of these hidden gems. Each studio is, they're magical places. You don't know what's going to happen. Tickets are not required for the tour that runs Friday through Sunday. McIntyre says to participate, you just need to purchase the yellow catalog for $10 per every two people at one of the locations. You can find all this information on KSAT.com. For GMSA, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Cool. Yeah, sorry, time check. If you have to leave at the bottom of the hour, you have about uh, 11 minutes. So hopefully you're only 11 minutes away from where you have to be. <laughs> Let's check, check and see if there's any problems on your way in. Yeah, Leslie, looks like we just had a major accident come out westbound 410. Now, first report said it was at Bandera and the 410 interchange. Now it might be just a little east of there near Evers, Babcock area. We're still trying to get a precise location on this accident, but here it is. It looks like it's going to be a rollover accident. I know TransGuide was trying to find it as well. We'll get you more information on this accident as it comes up. All right, let's take a look outside. Ten and Medical looking great right now. Uh, 10 at UTSA Boulevard, looking very smooth. We have 35 in Brooklyn, looking great. 
And uh, let's see what else we have here. 37 in Jones. Roadways definitely look better than they did uh, yesterday morning. Yes, sir. Thank <laughs> you, Nick. Some of us desperately need of a car wash forecast. And not a guarantee, but, but some help. Actually, and I want a guarantee. Do you want a guarantee? I do. It's looking pretty good because uh, any rain chances Sunday are not that great. Mm -hmm. uh, we might have a couple of little sprinkles here and there. So, But actually, uh, it looks fairly dry now through about the middle of next week. So, oh, perfect. Hallelujah. Of course, yesterday was Love Your Pet Day. And oh, Aww, look. Pets, even if they are donkeys, they are pets. And they are, I think she loves her pets. And the pets love her. Thank you very much for that. Uh, KSAC Connect picture. Make sure you keep sending those pictures in. Love to show them. We have got a lot of clear skies this morning and clear skies in fairly dry air. And that's allowing temperatures to drop down. We went down one degree in the past uh, hour down to 39 now here in town. Normal low is in the mid 40s where it's just below freezing. Lost Maples 33 Kerrville. So obviously some freezing temperatures out there uh, even in Northwest Bear County at 34 at Helota. So it may be freezing in your backyard and then uh, 38 up the road in New there is a breeze out there, so yep, a wind chill to deal with. It's cold. Boy, turn up the collar and button up this morning. Wind out of the north at about uh, 10, 15 miles per hour. A little bit breezier up there in New Braunfels. The wind is going to be easing somewhat. Still a, a breeze today, but it won't be... Not that this is strong, but it won't be as strong as this, about 5 to 10 miles per hour throughout the rest of the afternoon. We've got fairly dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, maybe a slight milky shade of the sky, but we're going to have a lot of blue skies out there today with a few clouds that will develop just kind of mixed on in here. So we've got the drier air that's pumping in uh, in behind these uh, northeasterly winds. Now the wind is going to start to swing around out of the east a little bit more tomorrow morning. It's still going to be very, very nice. Then it'll pick up throughout the day and by tomorrow evening and overnight into Sunday, the wind's really going to start to pull in more moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. And so that's going to put these uh, dew point temperatures up there. And so that's going to help out with clouds. And as that moisture continues to come on in, that's why we may see maybe a little sprinkle, maybe a, a shower here or there uh, late Sunday overnight into early Monday. And that's about the extent of it. The chances of rain aren't looking that great as of right now. Plenty of uh, clear skies right now. And again, a couple of clouds are going to be thrown in today. This model has just a, as you can see, maybe a couple of those shady spots there. A few clouds here and there. Uh, but overall, a nice looking day, especially on the heels of the uh, just gray, damp weather that we had, especially yesterday. It was cold yesterday afternoon. And then throughout the day tomorrow, again, another good looking day. A few clouds, especially tomorrow night. And then the clouds really start to build in here on Sunday. And we'll have clouds starting off Monday and then plenty of sunshine, even though we have a couple of uh, fronts moving on through next week. Doesn't really look like they're going to be squeezing on any, much of any rain at all. 50 today at noon, mostly sunny skies and again, a few clouds out there. 55 for an afternoon high temperature, so definitely on the cool side by a good 10 degrees. Now tomorrow, another cold start down in the 30s here, but nice warm up 62, so almost up to normal and then much milder Sunday morning. We stay at 50 and a lot more in the way of clouds on Sunday, perhaps a shower late and that may go into early Monday morning. We get up to 72 Monday, 70 Tuesday and then the next front's going to move through. It looks like later in the day on Tuesday and that's going to knock temperatures back down close to freezing again by Thursday morning and highs only about 60. Wow. Looking forward to seeing some sunshine today. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. 523, 39 degrees. Coming up next, a popular Steven Spielberg film headed back to theaters in honor of Black History Month. Oh, that's a great movie. 526, Steven Spielberg's The Color Purple is headed back to theaters as part of Black History Month. What a great movie. CNN's Rick Damagella has that story and more in your Hollywood Minute. This life be over soon. Heaven lasts always. The Color Purple heads back to theaters. Fathom Events announces the acclaimed film will screen for one day only this Sunday, February 23rd, as part of Black History Month and celebrating the movie's 35th anniversary. The screenings will include before and after commentary by TCM's Ben Mankiewicz. This marks the first nationwide release of The Color Purple in over three decades. This one is cute. Let's keep him. Sonic the Hedgehog's human co-star James Marsden says playing his character was surreal. I, I look at the TV screen and my you know, hand holding that Sega controller and playing, uh, having Sonic jump around and catch his rings, and and now I'm here like 
surreal in a surreal fashion, like bringing him to the big screen with another one of my, uh, another icon, Jim Carrey, and like one of my like comedic heroes. Today's another day to find views. The music video for Take On Me by 80s synth pop stars AHA has hit 1 billion views on YouTube. The live action meets animation clip is just the second song from the 1980s to surpass the 1 billion milestone after Guns N' Roses' Sweet Child of Mine. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. I remember when that music video debuted on MTV and we were all like, whoa, that's kind of... I, I don't think I was born yet. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Yes, you were. 527, 39 degrees, you're watching GMSA. Still ahead, the intelligence community is informing Congress of their belief Russia is already working towards interfering in the 2020 election. We have the latest on that. Let's look at how Bear County voters are showing up polls so far for early voting. Good morning, it's Friday, it is February 21st. It's a bit brisk out there too. Welcome to your Friday. We made it to Friday. We did, and Nick is here with a update at the bottom of the hour on Time Saver Traffic. Yes, it looks like that accident I was talking about, the one westbound, it actually is still, it's in between uh, Evers and Bandera. They're working mm -hmm. on it now on the main lanes. One vehicle rollover. One vehicle. Hopefully it won't be as busy as it was yesterday since we have dry roads for a change. Yes, indeed. The question this morning, though, is what is more important, warmth or fashion? Fashion's always more important. <laughs> Why do you think women wear heels? Hurt your feet, but... And she yeah. left her coat. Cover your shoulders is and what she's trying to say. And she left her coat in the say. car, too. And we yeah. offered to let her borrow a sport coat, but she's she's going to stand strong. Uh, temperatures are in the 30s right now. We do have a wind chill out there. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be, we're going to see some sunshine finally today, but it's going to stay on the chilly side, so cover up your shoulders. 55 for a high temperature later on this afternoon. And uh, <laughs> take a look outside right now. Should you be tempted to cut out your shoulder pads on your suit and <laughs> kind of... Go with go with this. We could fashion some uh, some epaulets for. You know, oh, so. we could. Yeah. No what? Huh? <laughs> and uh, should, like I said, it should be a good sunrise this morning. A few, uh, maybe a couple of clouds out there. Wind chill temperatures right now. Yeah, it's a bit breezy. It feels like 33 in town. Feels like freezing at uh, Balverde Canyon Lake, and 25 is the wind chill at Lost uh, Maples. So hmm, it's you know, a bundle up kind of a morning. Uh, mold, oak, ash, elm, everything is on the low side. I would imagine mold may be dropping down again with this dry air that's in place right now, but. You know, we're just getting into the start of the good old oak season. Overall, nice looking weekend. We'll have more sunshine tomorrow, more clouds on Sunday, chilly start, and then warming up by Sunday. But then there's another big front down the road. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Hopefully, it's a quieter morning than yesterday. It's been a quieter morning today. Things are looking good out there, but we do have this one major accident we're working on. This is westbound, or depending on how you see it, southbound uh, Northwest Loop 410, just east of Bandera. It's in between kind of Babcock Evers right there before the interchange, but it is on the main lane. It's a one vehicle rollover accident. SAPD is on scene working to get that, uh, get that vehicle off the roadway before rush hour traffic, hopefully. So still working on that accident. Okay, drive times. If you're on 35 southbound from 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. And if you're on 35 northbound, the southwest side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. So really good times there. Taking a look at the trans guide. We got 90 in military, hardly any cars on the road. 410 at Callahan, where the accident's near there. Things are still looking good. Doesn't look like it's affecting traffic much. And 410 in McCullough, things are picking up just a little, but still look better than yesterday. All right, Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you very much, Nick. Well, a family is safe after fire started at the back of their home overnight. It happened just after 2 o'clock this morning. This was in the 700 block of San Bernardo, which is on the west side. Firefighters say they had to attack the fire from two different streets. We're told they were able to knock the fire out quickly. The family was able to escape. Investigators are looking into the cause. Early voting is officially underway in Bear County. Now let's take a look at some of the latest early voting totals. More than 7,000 people cast ballots on Thursday, about 4,100 in the Democratic primary, more than 3,000 voted in the Republican primary. Total number of people who have voted so far in the March 3rd primary is now at more than 23,000. As you're making your 2020 selections at the polls, we want to help you keep track of all the races, the candidates, and, of course, the big issues. Every Tuesday, we send out a new Vote 2020 KSAT newsletter to break it all down for you. You can sign up for it by going to ksat.com newsletters.
534 in your morning headlines. Sources say the intelligence community has informed Congress of their belief Russia is working toward interfering in the 2020 election. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, specifically they say Russia is working towards getting President Trump reelected. The Kremlin is focused on the White House. One official said that they, their intelligence is that Russia is interfering or attempting to interfere in the 2020 election with the goal of re-electing President Trump. Last week, lawmakers were told Russia is hacking and attacking U.S. election infrastructure, according to one source familiar with the matter. This angered uh, Republicans on the committee who, who pushed back. And when the president learned about this briefing, he was very upset. A source says President Trump was frustrated that House Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff had been allowed to attend attend the hearing. The California Democrat tweeting Thursday that if President Trump is interfering with the intelligence reports to Congress, he is jeopardizing our efforts to stop foreign meddling. Despite findings from U.S. intelligence, which echo warnings from last summer. The Russians are, are absolutely intent on trying to interfere uh, with our elections. President Trump has repeatedly rejected the idea of Russia's influence on U.S. politics. You know who got me elected? I got me elected. Russia didn't help me at all. I call it the Russian hoax. It's a hoax. Democratic critics are calling on the GOP to address the situation. Take that backbone and speak to this president and say, this is enough. It's enough. John Lawrence, KSAT 12 News. Meanwhile, President Trump's latest travel ban goes into effect today. Immigrants from countries including Myanmar, Kyrgyzstan, Nigeria, Sudan and Tanzania are now barred from entering the U.S. The administration says the six Asian and African countries have deficiencies in sharing terrorist, criminal, or identity information. Civil rights icon John Lewis turns 80 years old today. The Democrat, who represents Georgia's 5th Congressional District, is serving his 17th term in the House. During the 60s, Lewis was part of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. That was one of the groups organized the uh, 1963 March on Washington. Lewis was the youngest keynote speaker at the event. Last year, last year, rather, Congressman Lewis announced he's fighting stage four pancreatic cancer. Well, it was a tough rush hour in Indianapolis yesterday. Look at this. A tanker carrying 4,000 gallons of jet fuel overturned and exploded, and this happened on a major highway. The Indianapolis Fire Department says cleaning up the site is an extensive process. The driver was near the truck when it exploded, but not in it. Now, the person did suffer burns and was last reported in critical condition. 537, 39 degrees. Still ahead, when it comes to children's health, education, and nutrition, where do you think the nation ranks compared to other countries? We're going to break down the numbers from a new report. And next, a new report shows millennials could be more susceptible to heart disease. We'll tell you why health experts say they could develop symptoms sooner than expected. Hello Friday, hello sunshine. We're in for a pretty nice looking weekend. It's going to be a little bit chilly, but at least we'll have sun. A new report predicts a surprising health risk amongst millennials. The study says millennials could develop heart disease much sooner than older generations. Not only a risk to their health, but researchers say that could also be a risk to their livelihoods and the economy. Tiffany Huertas explains. When I went to my doctor's office for a regular checkup, they checked my blood pressure and it was elevated. Bianca Salazar was pregnant at the time. When Bianca went to the hospital, she says they determined her blood pressure was unsafe and they had to deliver her baby. While her baby was born safely, she had other complications. I ended up having to stay in the hospital for a week because that's how long it took my blood pressure to finally come back down. Bianca is 31 years old. She says she's always been proactive with her health. She regularly visits her doctor since she knows her family has a history of heart disease and other conditions. But Bianca knows not everyone her age is taking these measures. A lot of people, they're kind of just coasting and they don't know that things are kind of creeping up on them that are dangerous. And the more they get checked out, the better it would be for them. High blood pressure, high blood cholesterol, and smoking are all risk factors for heart disease, according to the CDC. Other things that can put people at a higher risk, diabetes and being overweight or obese. Dr. Rajiv Padal is a cardiologist at Mission Trail Baptist Hospital and says millennials need to be getting checkups as early as 20 years old. Now it is because of the way how we eat and how our lifestyle has been changing, the younger generation people are more into that lifestyle and in the younger population we're starting to see this blood vessel problems and, and it comes to, into, into the heart 
part, including the brain, which is like stroke. Fadel says there are serious consequences if you don't take care of your health. You'll be out of job, uh, you'll be taking sick leaves. All those things impact uh, and how you work. Um, uh, all those things will be impacted because of this cardiovascular disease. A report published last year shed some light on the impact millennials' health could have on the economy. Researchers compared millennials to the previous generation, known as Gen X, and laid out some of the possible consequences if things don't change. They say millennials could see health care treatment costs go up by 33 percent. Mortality rates could also rise up to 40 percent, and millennials' annual income may be reduced by as much as $4,500 per person. This is because poor health will lead to job loss or reduce working hours. I think the misconception probably is I think that this disease doesn't um, affect you until you're old. I'm Tiffany Huertas. To see more stories like this, check out KSAT News at 9, Monday through Friday. Okay, Friday morning, 542, 39 degrees. Up next, a closer look at where the United States ranks worldwide when it comes to child development and health. 545 countries around the world are not doing enough to protect children's health and development, according to a new report. As CNN's Mandy Gaither reports, the research ranked the United States lower than you might expect. Awesome. The U.S. ranks lower than 38 other countries when it comes to children's survival, health, education, and nutrition, a new report suggests. The research published in The Lancet ranked 180 countries based on data that used various factors to measure the extent of which a child was given the opportunity to fulfill their potential. This included child survival rates, years of school, teen birth rates, maternal mortality, prevalence of violence, growth and nutrition. The U.S. came in at number 39 with Norway ranked first overall and the Central African Republic coming in last. To improve outcomes among children, some of the recommendations by researchers are for countries to stop excessive carbon emissions, tighten regulations around commercial marketing of junk food, alcohol, and other harmful products, introduce new policies to protect children's health, nutrition, and rights, and incorporate children's voices into policy decisions. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Just about 547. Let's see how the roadways are shaping up. Are the accidents cleared? Now, still working on that one accident westbound at 410 between Evers and Bandera on the main lanes. Um, it's still there. I, oh, we have some trans guide footage of it now as well. But this is what we're talking about. Westbound or southbound, northwest loop 410 uh, at Evers right before the Bandera 410 interchange. Looks like a one vehicle accident. Uh, here it is right there. So if you look, this is the Bandera flyover to 410. There is the accident. I saw a tow truck there. So that might be the tow truck right there leaving, I think. No, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, so it went, maybe it was just clear that accident. So perfect timing. Good news right before rush hour traffic that that accident just got cleared up. You have amazing concentration, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we're over here. Just <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So go to selfie video and we're talking. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how's it going, everybody? Hi, hey, it's going to be going good today. A lot of people are going to love this. Somebody at the grocery store asked me yesterday, do you like this weather? I said, oh, I love it. You know, it's cold. And I damp, like the damp cold weather when I can be right. home and a fire going, which I did get to do yesterday. Right. But Enough's enough. Yeah, you time know, for some sun. Variety is the spice of life. So speaking of, funny you should mention about the uh, fire because uh, check out the fire in the fireplace. That would be nice if you could just kind of relax nice. in front of the fireplace nice. this morning. Tonight's going to be a good night for a nice little cozy fire as well. Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. Sunrise should be uh, pretty good this morning. We do have a lot of clear skies. A lot of clear skies when I uh, walked out the back door. Now this morning coming into work, 36 right now in Balverde, 33 Comfort Kerrville. So in the outlying areas, it is probably freezing there and it is freezing in Lost Maples, 38 up the road, New Braunfels. But then there's still a breeze out there this morning. So yeah, definitely uh, bundle up because it feels like it is in most places close enough to freezing and even colder than that. Lost Maples 25 is the wind chill right now. It's because winds are out of the north at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. It'll settle slightly this afternoon, about 5, 10 mile per hour winds, and that'll be it. We do have a lot of uh, well, fairly dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. You notice how there's some moisture there, so maybe a couple of uh, high clouds today. A little bit of a milky shade to the sky, but we are going to see more sunshine, obviously. So that's going to be 
very nice compared to the past couple of days. Like we said, though, even though that was a nice little uh, stretch of weather there, uh, wind is out of the north, obviously, and it's going to stay that way throughout the day. So the humidity is going to stay very comfortable throughout the day. And then we go into tomorrow morning and, and it's going to be fantastic. A nice cold, crisp morning and we'll have a lot of clear skies around there throughout the day, though. The moisture is really going to start to pump back in here and by tomorrow night into Sunday, a lot more moisture humidity levels dew point temperatures do go up and so that's going to help out with the cloud cover. So not much. I mean, just a couple of high clouds, <coughs> excuse me today and then uh, tomorrow we'll have a few maybe a few more clouds here and there, especially later on in the afternoon tomorrow and then overnight here come the clouds and it's going to be fairly cloudy. It looks like on Sunday we won't be obviously as cold Sunday morning because we're going to have more of a blanket on top of us and then clouds in the afternoon. Uh, perhaps with the extra moisture, a couple of showers, but it doesn't look like rain chances are all that great uh, Sunday night into early Monday morning, just a small chance for some rain. So here's what the upper level winds are doing, and we've got this little bit of a uh, now just a little bit of a ridge is going to be developing here, and so that's going to help to get temperatures a bit warmer by Sunday and Monday. There is a weak front which comes through Monday. It's not going to do much of anything. But there's one on the heels of that that's going to come through on Tuesday, and that's going to pull down some uh, some pretty cold air. So we'll be back down close to freezing, looks like then by Thursday morning of next week. Today, nice looking day, a lot of sunshine out there, some uh, a few clouds here and there, mainly some high clouds, 50 at noon, and then a high temperature today, only 55. Now with the sunshine, it's going to feel fantastic, but we're going to keep a jacket handy throughout the day and then tonight it will get cold pretty quickly tomorrow morning back down into the 30s. We'll have a lot of uh, clear skies to start more clouds late in the day. 62 for high tomorrow 68 on Sunday. A lot of clouds, maybe one or two of those showers and then overall a lot of sunshine over the next seven days with a couple of exceptions here and there. 70s Monday, Tuesday, 60 Wednesday, Thursday. Wow. Another cold front. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Right now it's 551, 39 degrees. Up next, an impeachment report signed by President Trump himself is now up for auction. We'll tell you how much it's going for. Here are your lottery numbers for today. And this morning we have pick three, 498, Fireball 6, Daily 4, 5792, Fireball 6. And your cash five numbers are 579, 2425, Texas Two Step, 17, 18, 19, 33 with a bonus ball of 24. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, Diane Sawyer is back with more of her exclusive interview with Ben Affleck, now revealing his depression, how his Hollywood friends are helping him stay sober, and what he's saying about dating. Again, it's all coming up, plus much more, only on GMA. We'll see you soon. Go Spurs go. The Silver and Black are back at it tonight. The last game was 10 days ago when they won against the Oklahoma City Thunder tonight. Our Spurs take on the Utah Jazz in Salt Lake. Tip-off set for 8 o'clock our time. The game is at the Vivint Smart Home Arena in Salt Lake City. And Auction House in New Jersey is auctioning off a unique document called one of the most historical that President Trump will ever sign. Alexandra Hoff from KYW has more. On December 18th of last year, Donald Trump made history becoming only the third president to be impeached. Article 1 is adopted. That same night, the president held a rally in Battle Creek, Michigan. It doesn't really feel like we're being impeached. Do you? <laughs> but hours before that rally started, a known source reached out to Ken Golden of Golden Auctions here in Runnymede, saying they were about to get something special. At the time, he just sent me an email that morning and said, we're going to get this sign at the rally tonight. Do you want it for your auction? The source's plan? To get a copy of the House Judiciary Committee's impeachment report signed by the president. And it worked. This is uh, somebody within the Republican Party who has access to meet and greets. And the report signed by President Trump is up for auction on Golden's site. The highest bid as of Thursday evening, $17,000. This is the most historical item that he ever will sign. I mean, he signed his own impeachment document on the day he was impeached. Because of its significance, Golden got the document authenticated by two separate companies. It's truly a unique piece of American history. 
So who does this high ticket item appeal to? Golden says both lovers and haters of the president have reached out, but he's impartial. I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. I'm a capitalist. He feels the highest bid could reach $40,000, but adds others have predicted it's worth three times as much. The impeachment of Donald J. Trump, president of the United States. The online auction closes this Saturday at 10 p.m. That was Alexandria Hoff reporting right now about three minutes till you're watching GMSA today the starter burger week here in San Antonio one local spot which offers what Yelp calls the best burger in Texas is participating we'll have more in today's flavor faves in the next hour of GMSA let's hit the roads right now a trans guy taking a look around town the metro area 35 at 410 looking pretty good out there we'll get an update from officer Nick Solis and time saver traffic People displaced after a fire broke out at a Northside apartment complex early this morning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa, and just a bit what the fire department is saying, how they believe this fire started. Other top stories this morning, San Antonio police looking for two men who robbed a local convenience store. We have details on what they stole and how they got away. And taking you outside on your Friday. It is cold this morning, grab your coat, but hey, sunshine's in the forecast. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hey there, good morning. Hope you slept well. It is Friday, February 21st. Yeah, made it to Friday. So glad to have you with us this morning. Don't need your umbrella today, but you do need the coat. You do. We are in the 30s out there. We've dropped about a degree in the last hour or so. Mike joins us now with a look ahead to our Friday and beyond. Nice second weather. And good. It was great. A lot of people love the, the cold, damn, chilly weather, but... Okay, now we see some sunshine today, so it's going to be a good looking day, but you will definitely need a coat all day long, starting with this morning. As I mentioned, uh, it is now freezing up there toward Bernie Sage, Lost Maples at 31, 38, the airport. So we've dropped down, like Mark said, another degree in the past hour and we're slowly creeping downward. But the problem is, too, we do have a breeze out there, so we've got wind chills. Feels like 25 in Kerrville, uh, freezing from Bernie over toward Canyon Lake. 30 is the wind chill in New Braunfels. Same thing out there at the airport. Mold and everything else are on the low side. That should continue to go down given the fact we've got some fairly dry air out there. And of course, the uh, oak season is just kind of getting going, but not, not peaking as of yet. Just when we finish up with mountain cedar, now the oak comes in here. Anyway, uh, temperatures will uh, again drop down maybe another couple of degrees throughout the rest of the morning. Should have a decent sunrise and uh, plenty of sunshine with a few clouds mixed in throughout the day. We are going to make it up to right around 50 degrees today at noon and then top off only at 55 today. So we'll be about 10 degrees below normal, but we will have more sunshine. So it's going to feel a lot nicer if you are heading out this evening, of course, Cool is going to get cold very quickly, so take a coat. And then tomorrow looks like a pretty good day. More clouds on Sunday and some warmer temperatures. Details on the weekend coming up. Time saver traffic right now at Officer Nick Solis. And, well, no rain, so hopefully nothing going on. Anything? I'm looking a lot better than yesterday, yeah. right, Mike? Things are looking great out there. Looks like we had one accident uh, on, on the south side of town, 35 in New Laredo Highway. That one's just cleared up, so that's great. But if you are on the work this, to, this morning, on the way to work, this morning expect a smooth ride things are looking great out there let's look at some drive times all right if you're coming from the city of new Braunfels to 1604 it's 16 minutes and if you're on southbound 35 from loop 1604 to downtown 12 minutes so things are looking great all around the city all right trans guide 410 and mccullough on the northeast side looking good traffic still looks light 1604 and petranco on the far west side looking good 35 and north loop 10 Still the same. Things are looking great. Roadways aren't slick. I think you're going to have a great ride to work. All right, Mark Leslie, back to you. Nick, thank you. 603, 12 people now without a home after a fire broke out at a north side apartment complex very early this morning. It happened at the Parliament Bend Complex in the 11,800 block of Parliament, which is right off of Blanco Road. Sarah Costa is live on scene with the latest. Sarah? Good morning, and that scene is clear now, but that was not the case about an hour ago. At one point, there are 100 firefighters here on scene. I want to show you that video from earlier this morning. There were so many 
firefighters out here because it was called a two alarm fire at one point, then canceled because firefighters were able to knock it out quickly. No one was injured and everyone from the building was evacuated safely. The San Antonio Fire Department says they got the call at three this morning. The fire started on the second balcony of one building, building 10 here on the complex's campus, and they were in that fire quickly spread to the attic of that building. Eight units were damaged temporarily, displacing about six people, six other people permanently displaced in four units that are permanently damaged. Firefighters say they believe that this fire was an accidental fire and they don't believe arson is even going to come out to this fire because it, they said it was an accidental fire that started on the second balcony, possibly by a cigarette butt. Live from the north side, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police are looking for two people who robbed a far west side convenience store. They say it happened at a Circle K in the 9600 block of Culebra around 140 this morning. A police sergeant says two men walked into the store. One pulled out a handgun. The two took beer and drove off in a pickup truck. This morning, Bear County Medical Examiner has identified the woman who died in the Kirby jail yesterday. Investigators say 36 year old Amanda Watkins appeared to strangle herself in a holding cell. The officer found her unresponsive yesterday just before noon. The Texas Rangers and Kirby's Internal Affairs Unit are still investigating the cause of death. Today, friends and family of Sergeant Javier Gutierrez will hold funeral services for the fallen hero. There is a public viewing scheduled today as well at from noon to one at Community Bible Church on the north side. Gutierrez died while serving in Afghanistan earlier this month. He will be buried with full military honors tomorrow morning at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery. An infectious disease expert criticizing the Japanese government for their handling of the coronavirus. The expert says containment efforts on the Diamond Princess cruise ship were quote unquote inadequate after she visited the ship. Comes as passengers aboard the cruise ship continue to disembark today. So far, 2,200 people have died from coronavirus, mostly in China. There are now more than 76,000 cases worldwide. Players on the U.S. women's national soccer team are seeking $66 million in damages in a gender discrimination lawsuit. The players filed the lawsuit against the U.S. Soccer Federation, which is the governing body for the professional sport in America. They claim there is unequal pay and treatment compared to members of the men's national team. Some of the documents released show separate collective bargaining agreements of the men's and women's teams, leading to pay disparity. The Environmental Protection Agency proposing national drinking water standards as it takes steps to regulate so-called forever chemicals in drinking water. PFAS are man-made heat and water resistant chemicals used to make everything items like nonstick pans, food containers and fabric protectants. The chemicals do not break down easily in the environment as studies have linked them to kidney and liver cancer. The EPA says it's trying to regulate two types of chemicals and is studying six others. Right now it is 606, 38 degrees. Bloomberg has released its list of the 100 richest towns in the United States, and a local town made the list. We'll tell you which one. San Antonio, hot spot for Art Deco architecture. And the artists who live in the Deco district are opening up studios to showcase their work. We'll take a look at the on and off Fredericksburg Road studio tour. And right now we're gonna take a look outside, bring you outside with live cam. Still waiting for the sun to come up. It's gonna be nice to see sunshine. Six ten. Welcome back. The Deco District has been a hot spot for many of the Alamo City's artists for several years. More than sixty local artists who live and work in the Deco District are opening up their private homes, galleries, and studios for the thirteenth annual On and Off Fredericksburg Road Studio Tour. Sarah Costa spoke to one of the founding artists about the importance of sharing art culture in the Alamo City. But I think it's just this mixture of all these different cultures here is really makes San Antonio a fabulous place for art. Dale Jensen is a San Antonio artist that has been working with sheet metal for over 20 years. She lives and works in her studio in the heart of the Deco district that is known for its many artists. Those artists are inviting the public to come see their private homes, studios and galleries at the 13th annual on and off Fredericksburg Road studio tour. For them to see us and to, to see that this neighborhood is thriving and vibrant is, is a is really important. The neighborhood art tour started 13 years ago by artists like Dale and is organized by the nonprofit Beale House Arts. 
The executive director of the nonprofit, Kellen McIntyre, says art tours like this are crucial for the district. If your arts community is healthy, your community is healthy. If your arts community is sick, your community is sick. The self-guided tour will feature 44 locations with 60 featured artists that live and work right here in the Deco District, along with an additional 200 guest artists. McIntyre says you can explore artist homes or studios in several neighborhoods, including Los Angeles Heights, Keystone and Jefferson. And we wanted to highlight that resource in this area and help bring uh, the Deco District uh, some notoriety and, and, some, uh, and some awareness. McIntyre says every year you never know what you are going to find in some of these eclectic studios, like the smoking UFO ship by Jensen. She says it's why she encourages the community to explore some of these hidden gems. Each studio is, they're magical places. You don't know what's going to happen. Tickets are not required for the tour that runs Friday through Sunday. McIntyre says to participate, you just need to purchase the yellow catalog for $10 per every two people at one of the locations. You can find all this information on KSAT.com. For GMSA, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. By right now, 613. It's time to check the roadways once again. How's the Friday morning commute looking, Nick? Friday is looking great right now. No accidents to report. Smooth, uh, smooth commute if you're on the way to work right now. Really, things are looking great. Completely different uh, than yesterday. So let's take a look outside of the trans guide, why don't we? 410 and McCullough on the northeast side looking really good right now. Traffic picking up just a little, but not too bad. 1604 in Petrango, far west side looking very, very smooth right now. We have 35 and 410 looking good and let's see what else we have here we got 35 in loop 1604 traffic's picking up just a little bit that's normal though but other than that things are looking great thank you sir 24 years ago today y'all weren't living here were you nope no okay why i was, I was, I was three. <laughs> Oh, thank you for that do you remember 20 nick no, you probably don't. <laughs> i know gee <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Who remembers 24 years ago today? It was the earliest we hit 100 degrees. I wow. Below that morning, I was 50, below that morning was 51. So we gained 50 degrees basically throughout the course of the day. And I don't know what was more unusual that day or the entire month because. If you recall, the month started off uh, with temperatures down around freezing. We stayed basically at freezing or a little bit, didn't even get above freezing on the 1st of February that year. There was a trace of some rain. I recall there was a little bit of icing around the area. 19 was the low temperature on the 4th. And again, temperatures barely got above freezing those first few days. Then we hit 100 just three weeks after that. And then basically a week later, we were down close to freezing again. There was a bunch of rain, and I remember there was a little bit more icing around the area. So, yes, that was the crazy month of February 1996, and today is the earliest we have ever hit 100 officially out there at the airport. Not going to be hitting it today. Actually, we're going to be staying closer to what the low temperature was back 24 years ago. We've got uh, clear skies right now. Should have a decent sunrise. A lot of freezing temperatures right now. And uh, 34 in Helotus, freezing from uh, burning out in toward the hill country. Comfort just above that, but in your backyard may actually be freezing. 38 at the airport right now. Normal low temperatures in the mid 40s. And then we've got a breeze out there, which uh, makes it feel most areas like freezing or close enough to it. So definitely bundle up. Winds are about 10, almost 15 miles per hour right now. So that prevents the actual thermometer reading from getting as cold as what it could because it keeps the air kind of stirred up instead of that heavier, cooler air settling down to the surface. But no matter how you slice it, it's still cold out there because you got the wind chill to deal with. We've got a little bit of moisture upstairs in the atmosphere. So a couple of uh, mid high clouds later on today, but we will have more sunshine. Dry air is going to be sticking around today as well as tomorrow. So that's going to help out with all that sunshine. But then by late in the day tomorrow, Dew points really start to come back in here. They're really going to start to come up then Sunday morning, and that's going to help out with a lot more in the way of clouds. So just a couple of clouds around today, maybe tomorrow. And then once we get into tomorrow night, that's when, again, the clouds start to fill in, maybe even a little sprinkle here or there. And there's a small chance for a shower on Sunday, but mm, not that great of a chance, maybe late Sunday into early Monday. But overall, the next seven days are going to be fairly sunny. 50 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies. And a high temperature today up to 55 and northerly wind. It won't be quite as breezy as what it is this morning. And then tomorrow, another cold start, 37 degrees, make it up to 62. A couple more clouds and we'll see more clouds, especially tomorrow night. And then into Sunday, mostly cloudy skies, 68 degrees though. 
Not as cold Sunday morning. A shower is possible later on Sunday and uh, maybe perhaps a little mist in the morning. 70s Monday, Tuesday, but another pretty good cold front moves through here. So back down close to freezing by next Thursday morning. Wow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Exactly 617, 38 degrees. California investigators are releasing new details about a prominent family therapist who was murdered in Hollywood Hills. We have details in your GMA first look after the break. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. Enjoy barbecue flavor all year round with the Blue Diamond Grill Genie Cooking System with diamond-infused ceramic coating. The vented lid steams and cooks up to 30% faster. Sauce ruins other pans, but it wipes clean in Grill Genie. Enjoy perfectly melted cheeseburgers all year long. Delicate fish won't break or flake. It's even broiler safe. Sears season and cover for a juicier London broil up to 30% faster. Grill Genie rinses clean. It's dishwasher safe and toxin-free. Get Grill Genie for year-round easy grilling. Now available at these fine stores. Hey, allergy muddlers. It's here. Do your sneezes turn heads? Try Zyrtec. It starts working hard at hour one and works twice as hard when you take it again the next day. Zyrtec. Muddle no more. At Pure Leaf, the most important ingredient in making tea is saying no. In our real brewed iced tea, we say no to artificial flavors and sweeteners, which means no settling, unless it's into a comfy chair. Pure Leaf. No is beautiful. In this morning's GMA First Look, the man accused of murdering Drew Carey's former fiance, sex therapist Amy Harwick, is behind bars, potentially facing the death penalty. On Thursday, 41 year old Gareth Pursehouse, seen in this YouTube video. People look at me like I'm a crazy person when I do this, but I don't care because it looks pretty neat. I'm trying to get it perfect. It's pretty hard. Appearing in court after authorities say he strangled and threw Harwick, his ex girlfriend, off the third floor balcony of her Hollywood Hills apartment early Saturday morning. When they broke up, like he, he didn't take it well at all. He would do stupid stuff, say stupid stuff. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the latest on the investigation, plus the big change Drew Carey is trying to make with the hashtag Justice for Amy. With your GMA First Look, I'm Elizabeth Hur, ABC News, New York. Twitter's taking some new steps to counter false information. The company says it's experimenting with colorful labels and other tools to respond to misinformation from political and public figures. Well, Apple is in a publishing battle, reportedly trying to block the distribution of a new book by a former company executive called App Store Confidential. Reports say Apple wants the book pulled because the author discloses business secrets. However, it's already out on Kindle. Okay. And imagine making half a million dollars being just average. Bloomberg has ranked the 100 richest towns in the country. And for the fourth straight year, Silicon Valley's Atherton, California, number one. The average annual income, $525,000 a year. There's also a new addition this year, Alamo Heights, ranking number 75 on the list. Well, there you go. You had to be 220 just to make the top. 100. Okay, you had to at least average 220,000 to make the top 100. Two videos this week are going viral, including one that shows two unlikely animals becoming friends. Eric Hernandez joining us now with a look this morning here on GMSA. Hey there. Hey guys, good morning. morning. So we've seen stories before of like animals, maybe a duck and a cat, but this one is kind of new. It's a pigeon. It's one of our favorites. Yeah, he can't fly this pigeon and Aww. he's befriended a puppy that can't walk. Look. <laughs> they are so adorable. <laughs> so Herman the pigeon suffered neurological damage more than a year ago and as a result can no longer fly. The Mia Foundation in New York Aww. took him in. The rescue organization rehabilitates animals with physical deformities. The nonprofit's founder, uh, Sue Rogers, put Herman with little Lundy, a chihuahua puppy that can't walk, and the two have hit it off. Look how cute how they adorable. are, little BFFs. They started cuddling almost immediately. Everybody's been blown away on social media, and the foundation has since raised six thousand dollars in two days. Aww. And they are trying to keep them together. Oh, they they one of those pictures looks like the pup's going, "Get off of me!" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Doing a little nipple thing. No, 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 no. Super cute, though. Very cute. So from that, we go now to a man that may be the next Iron Man. 
Oh. Check this out. Oh, yeah, this is coolness. So this is no a Jetman Dubai built a jet-powered wingsuit, and they had a big day. You're looking at video. The pilot took off from the ground and got up to nearly 6,000 feet, going about 150 miles This just hour. seems like a bad idea. <laughs> danger, Will Robbins. Now, danger, this is the danger. first time he was able to get off the ground and go that high. Now they're trying to work on landing back on the ground without a parachute. Why would you not want a parachute? Well, that's is this. So is this the same guy that crossed the English Channel <laughs> with a jetpack, or oh. maybe a this different, is a, different? This is a different. I think it's one, different guy. He's trying to go like high. Like high. This is like the highest anyone's gone. First, I've seen the video from this attempt, but I did hear that it was a high, you know, a higher altitude was, well, venture. Yeah. I will also say the water's beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it, it makes you want. I mean, he probably has to keep look at that big giant. Look falls. at that big giant Ferris wheel. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I assume the problem would, you try would that? be sure. No, he would. Uh, <laughs> Me. The amount of fuel that you can carry. Yeah, it's. He says actually, they are using a carbon fiber suit, and it's powered by four mini jet engines. So can't you imagine Mike flying along, pulling up alongside your airliner? If you guys want to come back on camera here for a second, there you go. Mike pulls <laughs> up alongside the airliner and. <laughs> I actually can picture that. How frightening! I is know, that? right? Almost like Buzz Lightyear or something like that. <laughs> 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 like he turns around. All chin and suit. <laughs> Like oh, Iron shit. Man did, remember? <laughs> Didn't he do that? Yeah. He, Iron Man did that in the movie. That'd be yeah. so cool. We could totally see. Yeah, and it's funny because that. And that face, my, that look oh, on yeah. his face, the little oh, yeah. boyish look, like one look of at me. My favorite cartoons <laughs> when I was little was Iron Man. So. It's all come full circle for you. It has yes, come it full has. circle. <laughs> it's still a no. You would break something. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Erica, thank you. Thanks, Erica. All right, what are we doing now? Time and temp? Oh. We are. Time and temp. 625 and 38 degrees outside. New intelligence report raising questions about Russia's influence in the upcoming 2020 election. We'll see how some people are responding this morning to that report. And the Spurs get ready for their first game after a 10-day rest. We're going to hear how the team is preparing for the second half of the season. And Transkide. Officer Nick Solis from the San Antonio Police Department is standing by with a live update on Time Saver Traffic. It's Actually, Friday. He's sitting. <laughs> <laughs> People are out of their apartments this morning after a fire broke out at a north side apartment complex early this morning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. Why a cigarette butt may have caused it all. Coming up, a potential Russia repeat. A new report suggests Russia may be trying to interfere in the 2020 election. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington. You made it to Friday. What are Mother Nature's plans for the weekend? Here's a good sign right now. We've got generally clear skies out there on your early Friday morning. Good morning to you. It is Friday, February 21st. Welcome to your Friday, and it's going to be really nice to see the sunshine. Hopefully it's making your job easier since we don't have the wet roads today. Yeah, roadways look very nice right now. You're on the way to work. You're going to have a great time. We're running in the 30s here in town. Mike Osterhage. No blanket of clouds on us this morning, and that's what's allowing temperatures to uh, drop down and get so cold. And the uh, problem is also we've got a wind out of the north at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So that uh, mid upper 30s feels like low 30s and 20s around much oh, of the I year believe this it. morning. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see a lot of sunshine throughout the day, a couple of clouds thrown in, but only 55 degrees. So jacket's going to be a really good idea to keep handy, and especially if you're heading out tonight. And then tomorrow looks pretty good as well. So once again, what a gorgeous view. Obviously, the sunrise is going to be spectacular. Is that the little crescent moon up there? Almost looks like it, or is that a spot on the camera? One of the two. We'll get that figured out. You see that? Yeah, I can't tell if it's, because that's that typical location we run, usually run into a planet or a star also. Okay, we'll check that out for you. Anyway, these temperatures, again, mid to uh, lower 30s around the area. A lot of freezing readings, especially toward the hill country. And then look at the wind chills. Oh, goodness gracious. 29 Hondo, 25 at Kerrville, and it uh, feels like 30 out there at the airport, as well as in New Braunfels. Everything is on the low side as far as allergens are concerned. I would assume that mold is going to be dropping down. The updated count is going to be coming out in about to half hour, 45 minutes or so. Weekend overall doesn't look too bad. Cloudier, a little bit warmer on Sunday. Maybe a shower. We'll get that all sorted out and then talk about another front next week. So don't put your coats away, especially not this morning. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Yeah, it has been an extremely quiet morning. Anything yet? No, other than those two accidents we had this morning, things are looking good right now, Mike. So yesterday you were telling me about all the construction barrels on here. There's none out there today. So 
even construction wise, things are looking very, very good right now. Let's take a look at some drive times. If you're on 151 eastbound to 1604 to Highway 90, 10 minutes. And if you're on 90 eastbound to 1604 to I-35, 12 minutes. All right, we also have some more. Okay, 1604 from the Holotus area to Randolph Air Force Base, 30 minutes. And then back westbound, 29 minutes. So good times there. All right, Trans Guy, 1604 Petrenko on the far west side. Looking really good right now. Traffic's not, not too bad. 35 and 410 looking decent as well. And uh, 35 and loop 1604. Traffic's definitely getting a little more moderate, but nonetheless, we're looking a lot better than yesterday. All right, Mark, Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. 25 fire units responded to an apartment complex on the north side after an early morning fire broke out. It happened at 3 o'clock this morning at the Parliament Bend Complex, which is on Parliament near Blanco. Sarah Costa, live on the scene. Why were so many units needed to fight this fire, Sarah? Good morning, Leslie, and that's because at one point it was called out to a two alarm fire and then that call for a two alarm was quickly canceled after firefighters were able to knock out the fire relatively quickly. Just take a look at what that video looked like from earlier this morning. At one point, 100 firefighters on scene, the San Antonio Fire Department says they got the call at three this morning for a fire in the building 10 of the apartment complex. The fire started on the second floor of that building and quickly spread through the attic. Everyone was evacuated safely and no one was injured. Twelve people were displaced, six temporarily for the day as they wait for power to come back on, and the other six permanently displaced from four units that were pretty severely damaged. We spoke with Joe Arrington with the department earlier who says arson will most likely not investigate. It appears to be accidental, so not suspicious. So uh, arson's not really, they may come out just to take a look at it. Uh, as of right now, they're not, um, they're not coming. So it just looks to be accidental. So. Potentially, yeah. And if you couldn't hear what I was asking, Joe, I asked him potentially was that a cigarette butt when you're saying it could be accidental and that's when he said possibly, yes, it could have been started by a cigarette butt, uh, butt on the second balcony. And again, eight units total damaged, four severely damaged this morning at this complex. Live from the north side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Also new this morning, a family trying to figure out how much damage a fire caused outside their home. Police say a backyard shed caught fire in the 700 block of San Bernardo just after two this morning. That's near General McMullen Castroville Roads. Flames got close to the main house, but everyone inside was able to get out safely. Investigators are still trying to determine what caused the fire. A top story that we're following for you today, a new intelligence report says Russia is reportedly already interfering in the 2020 race, trying to help the president get reelected. House leaders were briefed about it, and that apparently angered the president. Meanwhile, the acting director of national intelligence was just replaced. ABC's Andrew Dimpert is in Washington this morning with more. A potential Russia repeat? ABC News has confirmed the intelligence community warned a bipartisan group of House lawmakers last week that Russia is planning to interfere in the 2020 campaign with the goal of getting President Trump re-elected. The New York Times reporting that briefing was done in the presence of House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff, the Democrat who also led the impeachment proceedings in the House. That infuriated Trump, who again attacked Schiff last night at a rally in Colorado. That little Adam Schiff, what a crooked politician. He's a corrupt politician. Sources tell ABC News the president believed Democrats would use the information from this latest Russia briefing against him. Democrats overnight defending the congressional oversight. Adam Schiff tweeting, he is again jeopardizing our efforts to stop foreign meddling, exactly as we warned he would do. Nobody's been tougher on Russia than Donald Trump. Nobody. According to another report in the Washington Post, the president called in then acting director of national intelligence, Joseph McGuire, into the Oval Office for a, quote, dressing down last Friday. I am not partisan and I am not political. But after last week's election security briefing, McGuire is out, replaced by ambassador to Germany Richard Grinnell, a Trump loyalist with no intelligence experience.
And overnight, ABC News confirming a wider staff shakeup within the intelligence community. Two aides are expected to leave their position, and a former aide to Republican Congressman Devin Nunez could be promoted to a senior role, signaling that Trump may be looking for loyalty in the wake of the Russia probe and impeachment trial. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. A recall alert this morning. Colecraft is recalling its inclined sleeper accessory for safety reasons. Reports say several infants died after they rolled from the back onto their side or stomach. Roughly 51,000 of the sleepers were made. Parents are encouraged to stop using the sleepers and return them for a refund. In further morning consumer news, the global airline industry could lose almost $30 billion this year alone because of the coronavirus. International Air Transport Authority says Asian carriers are bearing the brunt of that. The outbreak will likely reduce air traffic by 4.7 percent, marking the first overall decline in demand in more than a decade. Fewer people died in car crashes last year, continuing the trend for the past three years. The National Safety Council released preliminary estimates on motor vehicle deaths yesterday for 2019. They say there was a 2% drop from 2018 and 4% from 2017. The NSC says it's due to new policies in cities and states that make streets safer. Some of those policies include lower speed limits, more bike lanes, and fewer lanes for cars. Also, timing traffic lights to give pedestrians more time to cross. Wells Fargo may be close to a deal to settle federal investigations into all those false accounts. They were created without customer knowledge in banking, auto lending, and mortgage side. New York Times says settlements could be announced as early as today. However, the size of the fines has not yet been released. T-Mobile and Sprint working out the final details of their merger now that a federal judge has given the go-ahead. T-Mobile says they are hoping to have it done as soon as April 1st, but both sides now say they've agreed they can each walk away without penalty if it's not done by the 1st of July. Go Spurs go. In case you forgot, we still have a basketball team. It's been 10 days since the Spurs played a game because of the All-Star break, but they are back in action tonight. Spurs practice in Salt Lake City for tonight's game with the Utah Jazz. As a refresher, the Spurs beat the Thunder right before the break, and it was only win of the rodeo road trip so far. And more worrying, the Silver and Black have their work cut out for them for the remainder of the season. To end the season with a 500 record, they need to win 18 of their final 28 games. And the players know just what's at stake keeping the team's 22 season streak of making the playoffs alive. It's definitely important. It ain't over till it's over. You know, um, the beauty of it, being able to compete this, this stretch is, is, excuse me, is um, going out there, making, making that attempt to make it, you know, to, to kind of switch the narrative and kind of fight back and, you know, be that underdog type of story. You know, to, um, as a competitor, you definitely want to be a part of that. Um, and we still have the opportunity for that. Tip off for tonight's game against the Utah Jazz, scheduled for 8 o'clock San Antonio time. Be sure to tune in tomorrow on GMSA for highlights and reaction for what we hope is another Spurs win. Yes, go Spurs, go. Just about 640, 38 degrees. A local burger spot is enjoying the distinction of serving Yelp's best burger in Texas. We will see what Papa Burgers is doing to participate in San Antonio's Burger Week after the break. Six forty-three. Welcome back to GMSA. Starting today, more than thirty San Antonio eateries will be offering specialty burgers to benefit the San Antonio Food Bank. Eric Hernandez joins us now live in the studio with more about Burger Week and a closer look at one burger at one restaurant that they're serving up. Oh yeah, I mean, who doesn't like a good burger? I, oh, I love a good burger. Is like. The met bomb. a person that doesn't like burgers. Okay, well good. Well, Burger Week is a great time of the year to give back to the community and also enjoy some good food. One place who's participating is Papa's Burgers on the far west side, and their specialty burger is one that was recently voted best in the state. Take a look. For the past couple years, Papa's Burgers at 709 West Old U.S. Highway 90 has been getting some national acclaim for having some great burgers. They have been named the fourth best burger spot in America on Yelp, and recently the El Caliente Burger was named the best in Texas by Eat This, Not That, a food website. It's, it's exciting to know that we're doing something that draws the attention, and when things like this happen, we want the city to celebrate with us. So what exactly is the Caliente Burger? The burger itself consists of a one-third pound fresh grilled beef patty, all-natural beef patty. Uh, it's grilled, it's seasoned, we grill jalapenos and onions together to give it that nice flavor. 
we put that on the patty, we take a slice of pepper jack cheese, and we actually steam it over it. And that same burger will also be featured as the specialty burger the restaurant is offering during Burger Week. Papa's Burgers is one of over 30 restaurants participating this year, and when you buy a specialty burger at the participating locations, it benefits the San Antonio Food Bank. I love the city, and it's so amazing in the sense that it wants to help out its neighbors. And the food bank being located in this area just says so much more. So people that, that get involved in this, whether by purchasing or by participation, um, they actually affect the community that they live in by going out and actually taking part in this program. From February 21st to March 1st is how long Burger Week takes place, and the idea is to get people to embrace food, culture, and trying out new places. And if you have yet to try Papa's Burgers, make sure you stop by during Burger Week. It's one hamburger that is truly one of the best. We don't just sell burgers, we sell an experience. Now, if you're planning to hit up any of the participating restaurants, go download a passport on the Burger Week website. If you get your passport signed by four or more places, you're able to enter a drawing for an ultimate prize pack. For more info on Burger Week and how to download this passport, head to ksat.com. Mark? Leslie? Erica, thank Man, that you. Looked good. And oh. Nick Solis was salivating over there watching oh, this. Yes, he, he was watching like this. <laughs> Nick, I think you need to, um, that's your lunch today. <laughs> I'm going to Papa's Burgers in the weekend. It was good. That looked great. Well, what else, what, you know, the yeah. traffic looks great out here. Things are looking good this Friday morning. We do have some accidents, but they're not on the highways. Not going to affect your morning commute if you use the highways to go to work. So things are great right now. All right, drive times. If you're on I-10 westbound from the northwest side of I-35 to 1604, 12 minutes. And if you're on I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to I-35, 13 minutes. Good times there. All right, let's take a look outside. Look at this, 281 and winding way. There's no accident there. That's just the southbound lanes of 281. Looks like a Christmas tree with all that, all that traffic out there. Expect a delay if you're heading in that direction. That's what's against 281 southbound at winding way. 410 in McCullough looking great. Uh, 10 in East Loop 1604. That's looking good. 410 in Bandera looking even, well, traffic looks like it's kind of getting a, a little moderate there in that area. And uh, 10 and loop 1604 traffic is picking up there. Nick, we just realized that burgers make you giddy. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, I'm a big burger guy. I'm a big burger guy. Oh, I appreciate the art of a good burger. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I like medium. I like it when it's medium rare. Yeah. Yes. Well, and no. no, you're not supposed to eat ground meat medium rare. <laughs> There's No, you're not supposed to. The juices just flow a little bit right. you know, more. Steaks are fine because they sear the top and the well, bottom. Okay. And when you grind it all up, any yeah. of the bacteria from the top and the bottom get inside. But when they mentioned Caliente Burger, he was like, you know, <laughs> it's like whiplash. <laughs> and, and what's funny is, too, everything, you know, you put something on the grill, an open grill, always says, but there's just something about a burger on a griddle like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's so good. Best yeah. burger, though, ever, ever, ever is in Lafayette, Louisiana, Judy Sin. Best burger ever, 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 ever like ever. Simpsons. Not according to that story, it's Bob's. It's Judy yeah. Sound, I'm Papa's sorry. Burgers. It is. Um, hey, uh, Sandy, this is one of those pictures that uh, was just so, just so, so cool. Uh, the San Antonio Academy, uh, local school Aww. here, the eighth graders go on a, a trip every year, the eighth grade trip, and in various places. This year, obviously, they went to Washington, D.C., and such a cool experience. They got to, some of the guys, help out by placing a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Also there in Arlington, oh, at Virginia. Arlington Cemetery. And that is just, I mean, seeing that, you know, the changing the guard there yes. is, is unbelievable too, but getting that experience to do that. Amazing. It is, I and mean, what a great picture. They'll never, ever forget that. I mean, and you, you can't just go stand up next to those, uh -uh. those, those centuries like that. Yeah, and those That's centuries, awesome. to read about them and what they, <clears throat> excuse me, what they do, it's amazing. If you ever, ever get a chance anywhere near D.C., you have to go see the... Uh, oh, top of the list, Mike, for sure. The changing of the guard at mm -hmm. the... Uh, but, uh, wow, very cool experience for those guys. All right, what a beautiful, beautiful sunrise this morning. Oh, that's great, especially on the heels of the weather that we just had, which was wonderful, but it's going to be nice to see sunshine today. It's cold out there, 35 in Valverde, 32 up the road, uh, Comfort, Kerrville, Bernie, so we got a lot of freezing readings out there, and... 
Uh, we've got some wind chill to deal with as well. It feels like 30 here in town and even mid 20s in portions of the hill country right now. It won't be quite as breezy. Not that it's overly breezy this morning, but you know, 10, 15 mile per hour winds when you got temperatures in the 30s. That's a nice little bite to some of those readings. Uh, then it won't be quite quite as windy later on today, about 5, 10 miles per hour, but still any little breeze and temperatures only in the 50s, that'll be a bit nippy. So we've got a little bit of moisture aloft in the atmosphere. I think we'll have some high clouds uh, throughout the rest of today. That'll be about it, mid to high level clouds. Uh, humidity is going to stay very nice throughout the today, obviously, tomorrow. But then once we go into tomorrow night and Sunday, humidity really starts to come back in here. We're going to have a lot of clouds around Sunday uh, throughout the day and maybe a little mist in the morning and then perhaps a shower late on Sunday. And it will be warmer on Sunday as well. Today, it stays cool but beautiful. 50, mostly sunny skies today at noon. And then 55 degrees for a high temperature today. So about 10 degrees below low normal tomorrow another cold start and then a little bit warmer up to 62 with uh, again a lot of sunshine but then the clouds definitely start to thicken up late tomorrow night and Sunday cloudy skies up to the upper 60s Monday and Tuesday plenty of sunshine and 70s and then another big front comes through by the middle part of next week. Thank you Michael 650 38 degrees local elementary school students went home with a new book after middle school students saved up to buy them. Join us tomorrow for GMSA where we learn more about the pennies for literacy program. A stupendous sunrise out there on your Friday morning. So glad you're with us here on GMSA. Grab one last cup of coffee and get the news you need to know before you go next. Twelve people are displaced after a fire broke out at a Northside apartment complex early this morning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. This fire happening at the Parliament Bend apartment complex on Parliament near Blanco on the north side. At one point, 100 firefighters on scene because it was called to a two alarm fire and then canceled because firefighters were able to knock it out quickly. No one was injured and everyone from the building was evacuated safely. The San Antonio Fire Department says they got the call at three this morning. The fire started on the second balcony and quickly spread to the attic. Altogether, 12 people are displaced, eight units are damaged, and four are severely damaged, with six people being permanently displaced. The other six out of that 12 just displaced for the day. Firefighters say they believe that this possibly could have started because of a cigarette butt on the second balcony. From the north side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, whether it's a hurricane, a mass shooting, or an infection disease, infectious disease rather, like a coronavirus, every city has a plan in place for dealing with emergencies. See how prepared the Alamo City is for these kinds of things, and why City Councilman Manny Pelaya says San Antonio being chosen for the coronavirus quarantine actually makes perfect sense. That's today at 9 after Good Morning America. Uh, a little less than 5 till 7. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mark. Well, it's been a relatively slow morning today for traffic. Things are looking great out there. If you're heading to work right now, expect a very smooth commute, and I hope you all get to work very, very safely. Let's take a look outside of the Trans Guide. 410 and 151's looking great there, and U.S. 98 military looking better. Grab a coat, grab some sunglasses. You will definitely need them. A few clouds way off uh, along the horizon there in the distance, but obviously we're going to have a spectacular sunrise. 37 degrees here in town. We dropped down one more degree. A lot of freezing readings out there, and it feels like freezing and then some with that breeze. And throughout the day, beautiful. A couple of clouds, 50 and 55 for high temperature today. That's it. All right, thanks, Mike, and thank you for being with us, everybody. And good luck to our San Antonio Spurs in Salt Lake tonight against the Jazz. Go Spurs, go.